Welcome to the Root of Power podcast, where I teach you how to chase your joy, find alignment, and create a life and a business that you love using actionable methods, interviews, and inspiring stories from people who know that true freedom is found within. I'm your host, your always hype woman and sometimes ass kicker, Amanda Chills, and I am so proud of you for choosing to step into your power. Come along, we've got dreams to go. Okay, my love, I have put everything that I offer for free on one page so that we are not doing more work than we have to because why would we do that? Hashtag work smarter, not harder. So livemyhappyhealth.com slash free. You are going to find everything I've created for not only leveling up in your personal life and building a life that you love, but leveling up in your business life and building a business that you love. Okay livemyhappyhealth.com slash free. Love you. Hi, welcome to this week's episode. If this is your first time, hi, welcome. Uh, if this is not your first time, welcome back. Um, so stoked that we are hanging out again. Um, before we jump in, I want to let you know that either the waitlist is open for Exhale and Release, a program that I'm launching in 2024, or depending on when you're listening to this, the actual enrollment for the program is open. Um, so if you're listening to this in 2023, waitlist is open. If you're listening in 2024, enrollment is open. So this program essentially is, imagine um, if you have me in your pocket, it's delivered via private podcast feed. So you'll essentially have me in your pocket no matter where you go, no matter what time it is. And if you are wanting to neutralize, a, an unpleasant emotion, let's say you got like so pissed at a coworker or something triggered you and you'd like to not be, not feel triggered, um, you can press play on whichever episode is the closest to what you're experiencing. And in about 10-ish minutes, it will have shifted either down to completely neutral or something that feels much more manageable. Um, I am not going to promise that you'll just never be triggered again. That's not a thing, but it neutralizes it for you or makes it from where it felt like a nine to now it feels like a two. It feels much more manageable. So essentially it's removing the emotional hundred pound weight vest um, so that you can move forward feeling free, light, and clear. And there are two tracks that will launch 2024, a first responder track or a healing track. So if you're a first responder, you automatically get access to both. And if you're not a first responder, that one won't apply to you at all. Um, so then you would want the healing track. So there is that, exhaleandrelease.com. I am so, so excited. It utilizes everything I know as a therapist and have been doing. And rapid resolution therapy, which if you guys haven't heard of it yet, buckle up because it's it's becoming quite popular because it's incredibly effective. Um, so exhaleandrelease.com is where you find that. And let's jump into the episode. So um, this is a framework that I use with clients all the time because I found, and you know, anytime a client is newer, obviously they hadn't heard the phrase yet. So very often my clients um, will experience a lot of like frustration with people in their lives. And they'll often... Um, also then experience confusion and say things like, well, I don't know why they're doing this, or they just kind of have been expressing like disbelief over something that's incredibly actually consistent about this person. So it's like this person speaks English and then they're like confused that this person speaks English. And it's like, well, they've actually done this for decades, for years, for the entire time that you've known them. And so why are we still surprised that they're doing this thing? And usually my clients, because they're sweet, precious baby angels, um, the person is being unkind or they're being manipulative or they're being, um, not my clients, of course, the person that they're talking about in their life is being unkind, is being manipulative, is being just, you know, maybe a dick. And then they're like, well, but this, per I'm so confused. I'm so confused. I'm like, you told me multiple times that this person does this when this thing happens. Like they walk through a doorway, they, they start twerking. Like if every time they walk through a doorway and they start twerking, why are we so confused that when they walk through a doorway, they start twerking? Like this is definitely a pattern. And I 
was like, okay, how, how do I get across that? Like people are who they are. They show you who they are, believe them instead of, instead of hanging on to disbelief when there's so much evidence saying this is who they are. And so I started saying, don't treat a bear like a puppy. Because if you treat a bear like a puppy, you're going to get mauled. And they've been treating this bear like a puppy, meaning they want to cuddle it and snuggle it and play fetch with it and let it in their house. And what happens if you let a bear in your house? Well, they're going to eat you. That's what's going to happen because a bear is not a puppy. And alternatively, I've also started saying, well, you don't expect a bear to grow wings. No. And so bears are bears. Bears do bear shit. Puppies do puppy shit. But they're not the same. And you wouldn't expect a bear to grow wings because it's not possible. It's not possible. And so because, again, my clients are so sweet. They're so kind. They tend to have so much hope that they really hope this person will change. They hope that they'll become a puppy, but they've been a bear their whole lives. And I tell them, you know, it is possible that people change like with the right coaching. Maybe they go to therapy, learning the right skill set. It is possible to change. But if that person is not working on change, like if I'm not practicing the piano, I'm not going to be able to play the piano. And someone can hope that I learn to play the piano someday. But if they're really damn sure that I'm going to learn to play the piano, but I never, ever practice and they know I never practice, then that's not very valuable. And in fact, it keeps people trapped in these like really crappy dynamics where they get hurt. They get disappointed. They often get mistreated because again, they're, they've are they been expecting or hoping that a bear becomes a puppy and they've been treating a bear like a puppy. And then they're like, Amanda, why do I keep getting moles? And I'm like, well, it's because you've been treating a bear like a puppy and that's not useful to you. It's very useful to the person who's been acting like a bear because they so far have been able to manipulate because my clients had not had the skill set to be accurate about who this person is and what they've been doing. So this whole episode essentially is kind of around the concept of don't treat a bear like a puppy. And also you can't, you cannot expect a bear to have wings. I mean, you can, but it's not going to work out for you. So it's not useful to expect a bear to grow wings when that is not a thing that happens. And it's not useful to treat a bear like a puppy because they're obviously wildly different animals. So when people are not accurate about who people are, it comes from a number of things I have found. So one is very often there is a history of parents having parents or caregivers who were neglectful, abusive, um, emotionally immature, not really able to be good, supportive, healthy parents. Now understand everyone is doing their best. Parents do their best. And that doesn't mean that their best was good. And in fact, can mean that their best was horrific. So people can do their best and it's not good enough. And in fact, sometimes it is literally horrific depending on what was experienced. So often, um, because children can't just leave home at seven years old and expect to survive, one of the ways that children survive in an environment where the caregivers are not present, are neglectful, are abusive, um, are just not good, not stable, not healthy, they learn to ignore the bad parts because they're too painful. They were too painful. And so children, in an effort to survive, and it's the right thing to do, by the way, um, children don't have another option, really. So in an effort to survive, ignore the bad parts and focus on any moments where it does feel good, um, even if those are few and far between, even if people are absolutely horrific, there is at least one moment in that life where they were not or they were less bad. But if it's really, really, really negative 100, then negative 50 feels so good because the bad is so bad. So children, in an effort um, to survive, ignore the bad and hope for the good and often make up fantasies about the parent being good and don't believe how bad it is. One, because they don't have exposure often to other family dynamics. So really, a lot of people don't understand how bad their childhood was until they become an adult and start getting more exposure to other families. Um, and two, they have to survive that situation, right? So kids, so mind did the right thing, which was help them survive in any way possible, in any way that worked. And then because what the kid learned was to ignore the bad and only see the good, it creates a cognitive uh, dissonance 
meaning having inconsistent thoughts, beliefs, attitudes. So when that occurs, the brain will remove dissonance by ignoring the bad because all they want to see is the good. And if that's not relearned, if that's not retooled, then it carries into adulthood. And then those same kids do that with the majority of people in their life. And they may continue to do it with their parents. They'll do it with partners, things like that. Um, which is why I'll often have clients be like, oh, well, I love them. They're such a good person. Meanwhile, this person is beating them, manipulating them, you know, controlling them, whatever. They're like, but they're such a good person. And I'm like, no, no, those things don't make any sense. Um, those things do not exist at the same time. So it creates cognitive dissonance, but the cognitive dissonance is there for a reason because it was a survival mechanism. Now it worked in that environment. It was necessary in that environment, but it is certainly not going to be helpful as an adult. So it also creates um, confirmation bias, meaning what they want to see is what they find. Now, everyone, this has happened to you. If you start thinking about getting a new car and you're like, oh, you know, I really, I really want a Jeep Wrangler, you're going to start seeing Jeep Wranglers everywhere because mind looks for what it wants to see. So if you only want to see where they're good um, or where they're at least not <laughs> as problematic, um, then that is what mind is going to see. If what you really, really, really want to see when you look at a bear is a puppy, mind is going to look for all the similarities in which they're a puppy and ignore all the areas in which they're actually a bear. And then people are like, oh, no, I'm so confused. I got mauled. And it's like, well, yeah, you've been treating a bear like a puppy and that does not serve you at all. Now, again, it was necessary at one time or it would not be present. Mind doesn't do things on accident, especially survival skills. They, it's not just like mind loves that. It was necessary at one time, but is no longer necessary now as an adult, when you have more agency, when you have more choice, when you have more options, necessary when you are a child, not necessary when you're an adult. So all of these survival skills, you know, happen, very useful, not so useful later in life, right? Which is really the point of this episode is it was useful for you then, it is no longer useful. We want to treat a bear like a bear because Ideally, I mean, I don't want you getting mauled, and I'm sure that you don't want to get mauled. So let's prevent that from happening by setting up accurate vision with people, the right systems, the right protections, the right boundaries, so that way you're not getting mauled by a bear, because that sucks, and we have things to do. The common denominator in that scenario is that you were trained to, you were conditioned, um, it was necessary at one point to not be fully honest, fully accurate about who people are and what they're doing because you needed to survive a certain scenario. Okay, amazing. Thank you very much, brain. That was very useful. Not so useful now. So since I have access to your mind, since, hello, I'm speaking to you, um, we can rewire that, which is excellent. So the problem with that is it often keeps people in dynamics that are not healthy um, because if you're ignoring all the bad and you're like, well, he really only beats me, you know, five or six times during the week. Um, but you know, sometimes he buys me flowers and that's really totally worth it. Or, you know, my boss hasn't been paying me for three weeks, but they let me come in 15 minutes late. And that's so great. I mean, I really can't pay my bills and my electricity is about to be shut off, but sometimes, um, sometimes they let me come in late and sometimes they, we have a pizza party. Um, and that's really great. And it's like, um, listen, if your electricity is being shut off, like we have a fucking problem. Or if you're like, yeah, you know, like every time I talk to my mom, she guilt trips me and I feel like throwing up. Um, but one time for my birthday, she took me ice skating. That like you can hear how that's imbalanced, right? So so when people have been treating a bear like a puppy, they continue to get hurt because we're not acting appropriately. We're not believing the evidence that we see. They've been believing the evidence that they want to see and filtering everything else, but that doesn't help you. It certainly doesn't help you long-term. Um, and then of course it can have an impact on self-esteem because what else do children do? They think everything is about them. Oh, my parents got divorced because I wasn't good enough. My mom beats me because I'm not good enough. My dad doesn't spend time with me because I'm not lovable enough. Actually, and so if that remains unchecked as well, and that is a belief that has to be undone, if that remains unchecked as well, then, you know, adults are still taking things personally. And you know this to be true because how many people <laughs> do you know in your life that are adults 
that um, take things personally, and it's not about them at all. But unlearning how to do that is a skill set. So some people don't grow out of it, quote unquote, because they're never taught differently. Um, so that's not great. You cannot build a healthy relationship with um, with someone's potential. And our ability, you know, it's something so really beautiful about humans is like our ability to see potential is um, fucking infinite <laughs> and sometimes fucking delusional, which is a good thing um, when it's a good thing. And it's an unhelpful thing when it's an unhelpful thing. So if you're thinking a bear has the potential to turn into a butterfly, I have some news for you. That is not possible. And if you're thinking someone has the ability to grow and learn and do differently, 100%. They have the potential to do that. And then are they actually working on it? Are they actually putting effort into doing that thing and not just putting lip service in? Because having a relationship with someone's potential is not having a relationship with them. It's not real. You cannot have a relationship with a fantasy. And in fact, if all you have is a relationship with a fantasy, um, you're, you just end up suffering because you, you don't actually have a relationship with the person in front of you. And that's not okay. Um, so if we're not accurate about who people are, then we get into trouble. And you may be like, but Amanda, um, I don't want to, I don't want to never acknowledge when they, when they're being wonderful. And it's like, well, I'm not telling you <laughs> to do that. What I'm saying is be accurate about who they are. See who they are and what they do based on the evidence of who they are and what they do. People are always, always, always showing us who they are. You've heard the phrase, it doesn't matter what you say, it matters what you do. That's a phrase for a reason. What people do is evidence of who they are. Now, is that to say if someone is generally kind and lovely and thoughtful that they like never get to have a bad day? No, of course not. But then you have a lot of evidence saying that they're kind and loving and wonderful and normally and that they're blow up is um the outlier and so we just want to be honest and accurate about oh okay 90 percent of the time they're totally legit but on a full moon they become a werewolf so it's like okay great well we've got 30 days in the month where <laughs> they're totally fine and one day they're a werewolf versus being like oh they're always a werewolf and the one day they're wonderful they're totally a wonderful person. And it's like, um, listen, if somebody is like totally terrible 29 days out of the month and one day they're great, it is not helpful to ignore the 29 days and only focus on the one. So the point is we don't ignore any evidence. We see all evidence accurately and make decisions based on evidence, not based on potential or fantasy. Because that, mm -mm, it's just not gonna help you, honey. You can hope that a bear has wings until the day that you die but it's not accurate. And you can hope that my pecan tree in my backyard gives you apples and you can cry every year that it doesn't give you apples. But if you want apples, let's get it from an apple tree because my pecan tree is not going to give it to you. It's just not going to do. So the goal is to be objective. What is it actually that they do? What evidence do we actually have? And let's make informed decisions from that. If someone always speaks English and you expect them to speak German, that's whose fault is that? That's your fault because they speak English every day and you're just like, wow, why aren't you speaking German? I thought you've spoken German this whole time. And they're like, no, I've definitely spoken English this whole time. And you're like, wow, that's so weird. You speak German. And they're like, but I don't speak German. Like, it doesn't make any sense. That's a perception problem, not a what are they doing problem. Let's be accurate about what people are doing. Um, so the goal, the goal, the goal, the goal, the goal is <laughs> accuracy. Believe who people are because they're always showing you who they are and then make decisions. For example, if I know that um, every time I go to talk to a friend of mine about work, they get like super angry and super defensive, then I'm not going to be confused when I go to talk to them about work and they get super angry and super defensive. And if I know and acknowledge that that's going to happen versus ignoring it and pretending to be surprised, um, I can approach a different way. 
because if you don't know, like if you're just lying to yourself about who people are, then you can't actually approach them differently because you'll be like, oh, this bear can fly. This bear has wings. Um, but the bear doesn't have wings. And so you're going to be like, you know, I expect the bear to just fly away, but it doesn't fly. Like it doesn't make any sense to lie about who people are, except for many people that was a necessary survival skill that was never unlearned. So great. We can unlearn it and be much more accurate about who people are. When we're accurate about who people are, we can respond appropriately. We can respond in a helpful way. We can change dynamics. But you can't change a dynamic if you're lying about who someone is, because then you're not going to solve the right problem. Does that make sense? So if you are continually surprised by someone's behavior, I would guess that you haven't been as accurate as you think you've been um, in assessing that person. You have likely been treating a bear like a puppy. And so if you continue getting mauled, I would say kick the bear out of your house because it's not a puppy. Um, doesn't mean you never interact with a bear again. It just means that we react with a bear appropriately in a way that we're not going to then get mauled. So this is not like, oh, if you don't like what they're doing, kick them out of your life. No, no, no. You can have whoever you'd like in your life in whatever capacity that you would like. What I'm suggesting is let's do it in a way where you're not suffering. Let's have people in your life in a capacity that feels good to have them in your life and not bad every time you interact with them. Because when you're accurate, the relationship actually gets better because you're not, you're not doing things that we know on some level won't work because it's not who this person is and it's not how they respond well. Um, so we're actually much more like effective in dealing with people when we're accurate in who they are because then we're going to have a relationship with them in a way that resonates with them, in a way that makes sense with them. This is kind of like how most things are not a one size fits all. People, you know this, are absolutely not a one size fits all. So we we want to tailor our approach, our relationships, our dynamics based on who people are. If I try and treat um, <laughs> a bear like a puppy, it's just not going to work, right? Like, so all of that to say, like, if that's, if that has been something you've been experiencing, it is so, so, so common. And in fact, is a survival response that served you at one point. Or it's a learned behavior, or it's a family culture. It's not always a survival response. This is not everything is trauma, right? Like, it can be family culture, it can be um, a conditioned response, it can be a survival response any of those things. The point is you learned it from somewhere and you likely learned it unconsciously. And if it hasn't been serving you, which it doesn't, the cure, the fix is to be accurate about who people are and what they do. So that's this whole episode in a nutshell. Um, yeah. If you have questions, comments, if you're like, oh, damn, I've definitely been treating some bears like some puppies, shoot me a message on Instagram at Amanda underscore chills. I would love to hear your experience. Um, if this podcast is at all useful for you, and I sincerely hope that it is, I hope you consider leaving a five-star review. Um, that helps it get in front of more people, and then more people get support, more people feel better, and then uh, the whole world feels lighter and better. Um, less people suffering, I think, is always a good thing. And if you are interested in Exhale and Release, um, exhaleandrelease.com is where you find that. So that's all the things I can think of. Um, I hope you have the most beautiful day, night, morning, evening, whatever time it is for you. And that this was helpful to shift for you. So have a good day. Bye.